Hey ya folks, how we going? Today we are talking about a game that I think has a very specific audience, but I don't think that's a bad thing at all. This is Thirsty Sword Lesbians from Evil Hat Productions. Thirsty Sword Lesbians is a deliberately setting neutral game. It's a system that's designed so you can do anything from coffee shop romance to, say, intergalactic space opera. This is because the main focus of the game isn't a lore or a world, it is a theme. It's about telling queer stories. Really, the main idea is you are thirsty, you have a sword, and you are a lesbian. This game is based around Powered by the Apocalypse. It's a system I'm pretty familiar with, which operates off of 2d6. You roll the dice, add any penalties or bonuses you might have, and depending on your result, you might fail, get a mixed success, or get a complete success. I will say that there are aspects of this game which do feel crunchier to me. For example, your characters don't have hit points or health points. Instead, if your character gets too compromised, they'll take on conditions which will affect how you roll and affect how you roleplay your character. Because this is a game about overcoming oppressors or telling queer romances, the writers of this game have explicitly included the instructions to not overthink things. Rather, you're encouraged to be the disaster gay that you've always imagined. This is a roleplay focused game, and the mechanics are written into the roleplay. As your character develops and interacts with other characters and NPCs, you develop what is known as heartstrings with these characters. These can be spent in interactions with these characters to maybe get them on side or convince them to follow your idea. While combat is absolutely part of the game, it's less of the mechanical focus. Like many Powered by the Apocalypse games, most moves or character actions are specific to a player's playbook. These playbooks are based around archetypes, be they both fictional or real. I have met every single one of these lesbians in these playbooks. Seriously. Each playbook has its own distinct flavor and characteristics. These are both for flavor and a fun gaming experience. Generally, the spirit of the mechanics of these... Generally, the spirit of the mechanics of a Powered by the Apocalypse system is to accelerate the action into the third act. I think this is a feature rather than a bug of the game. You also have some unique stats to this game. Daring, Grace, Heart, Wit, and Spirit. While these aren't your standard array of scores, I think it really helps indicate the flavor of the game. The process for creating a character playbook is... The process for creating your own character using a playbook is pretty thoroughly explained, so I do think it is pretty beginner friendly and you can just follow along the text to create your character. Before this game book gets into explaining the mechanics of the game, they do have a couple of requests to make of the player. The main one overall is to respect different minority groups. This is a game about various minority groups, primarily queer people, and personally I don't think that is a huge huge ask to make, and personally I don't think that's a huge ask to make of people, to respect the types of people that they are role playing. If you don't like or don't respect these groups, you probably won't enjoy this game anyway. This book, like many other independent or smaller role playing game books, talks about consent a fair bit in gaming. While this is becoming increasingly more common in gaming books, I think it is really important that Thirsty Sword Lesbians talks about it. There's lots of flirtation and social interactions written into this game. And I think in particular when you're playing with new people or even your friends, it's a good idea to know what everyone's boundaries are. It'd be a shame for the fun to be ruined just because we didn't know someone's boundary. I also have to mention that everything is really well set out with a clear table of contents, an index, and a glossary. I think these are really underrated features of a game book that allow you to flick to just the right spot when you're at the table without taking out too much time. I forgot to mention this until now, but the game master in this game is called the game master, and I just think that's really fun. There's a lot in here for the game master to run the game, as well as a lot of guides guidelines on how to create your own story using these mechanics. If that is too daunting, there are plenty of scenarios that are mapped out 
These aren't pre-written adventures, but more so settings that you and your players can play in. I also have to bring up the art in this book. The art here is very unified, with a lot of bold colours, shapes and lines that create a really dynamic and exciting feeling while you're reading. I really like that this game is specific. There are lots of game manuals out there that are designed to be a generic fantasy or a generic sci-fi or a generic role-playing scenario. While this isn't written into a setting, it has a very specific tone and mood. We are really lucky to be living in a boom era of tabletop games, and I think there is plenty of room for a very specific game like Thirsty Sword Lesbians. Normally I don't comment on what I've read online about games, as I like to give you just my thoughts, but while I was preparing to write my review of this, I looked up online and found there was a little bit of criticism saying that this was a game that was created to chase clout. I don't think that's the case. Over 40 people worked on this game and I don't think they did it for internet brownie points. There is a significant queer tabletop role-playing game community and a game that caters to a very specific subset of players is absolutely welcome. If you don't like Powered by the Apocalypse or you don't like the idea of playing a thirsty sword lesbian, it's totally fine to give this game a miss. If you're open to either of those two ideas, this is a fantastic game with a lot of charm and flavour. If you are a queer gamer, this is absolutely a game to check out. Now this is a game that is mostly focused on roleplay and the human drama. If you are looking for a game that has a lot of rules and mechanics for combat, this isn't quite the one. If you have a group that is really hankering for a roleplay focused scenario, this is absolutely a great one to check out. I picked up my copy of Thirsty Sword Lesbians from my local gaming store for $50. I have to say, for me it's already repaid that money in the joy I got from reading this book. Well, those were my thoughts on Thirsty Sword Lesbians. Have you ever played a queer character in your games? Would you? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked today's video, I highly encourage you to like and subscribe, maybe share with a friend. It just encourages me to keep going. And I hope to see you next time at the gaming table. Bye.